Hello! This is not a new Steve's Factory Manager update. I'm just having a bit of fun. So, um, this is utilizing the uh, things from today, the uh, advanced camouflage, well, the advanced clusters, and yesterday's update, it's the tra transforming camouflage blocks. So, uh, let's take a look at what it can do, and then I will describe what it, how it works. So, if I press the two house button here, it's going to show us how to find the house. If I check where the pond is, it's going to show us where the pond is. And if I click uh, to show where the tower is, it's going to show us where the tower is. And these have no collisions, so I can just run through them without a problem like that. And after a while, if we don't do anything, uh, they will disappear like that. Uh, you can configure it, that timer. Uh, but for now, it's ten and a half seconds, I think, from, from its start, uh, starting pretty cool to like show how to find spe specific things. Now it's not really that tricky. We have a house, we have a pond, and we have a tower, and there are nothing else here. But of course, uh, if you have bigger s systems, it might be quite nice to be able to do so. Well, show where things are. Right, so here we have uh, the whole thing, and I'll, I'll go through it uh, one by one. So here we have three different triggers. So basically what these are, are these different ones. So for each uh, destination, we have uh, one one set there. So actually, as you can see, for each destination, the only thing we do is having two commands. So it's it's fairly straightforward to expand this to add more more um, destinations. And what we have here is a trigger, and then a variable uh, thingy. So we set uh, the variable, the remaining ones, to basically uh, uh, a lot of these things here. As you can see, not all are selected, uh, because we only want the ones going to the house. And these are the transforming cable camouflages. Um, so basically, we have a lot of transforming cable camouflage here that are completely invisible for now. The reason why we don't see any cables are, of course, because they are inside advanced uh, cable clusters, which means that we can still use the camouflaging effect, but since they are in the advanced cable clusters, they also work as cables, which means that if we have a long sequence of them here, they will connect to each other even though we can't see them, and that allows us to actually hide this whole structure, and then everything just goes along like that. We, I can make them all visible later, and we'll take a look on that. Right, so basically it just sets the, the uh, correct set of... Uh, these clusters to form the correct path. And then you just select that. It actually goes pretty straightforward. You just use some nice filters and you can easily just do that because they are all in, in line so you can use the cable distance very easily to do that. Okay, so first that is set. Then we check a condition. And this condition basically checks if we're still running the previous one. If we don't run the previous one, one what we want to do is start the whole thing. And to do so, we'd flip this uh, uh, emitter there. As you can see, this one is just blinking, and that's triggering this thing here, which uh, basically triggers the whole thing again, and that makes us place one more of these. So we just it go forward by one, and then it just triggers itself back and forth like that. And then when when um, let's see here, when this one uh, goes back to zero, when the, this turns off, it's going to uh, uh, stop the whole thing. So that's the reset mechanism. So if we take a look here, there you go. Right. So we can actually use that to see if we're currently running, and that's what this does. So if we don't run, then we need to turn it on. And we do that by flipping that timer thingy. And then when that has been done, then we set the timer to be uh, uh, on, but we set it to 10 seconds. Uh, well, 10 and a half, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just modified the seconds there. And then when that, uh, uh, then when we've done that, when we, what we want to do is set uh, the full one here to uh, uh, let's see now to the remaining ones. So basically, what that means is that when we turn everything off again, we need to know which ones to turn off. You can do it differently. You can select all instead. That's totally possible as well. But basically, here we have another trigger, and when that turns off, this one here, and that's our, our this one. So when this turns off from this side, so we actually check the side. Then what we want to do is uh, uh, we want to flip this one here, which turns it off again. Uh, a few tricks there. And then what we want to do is... Uh, let's see now. Where is it here? Here we are. Camouflage. That glass doesn't really matter. The important part is actually... Uh, 
we could set it there. Uh, it was just from testing. The important part is this. So we update it. Uh, we remove its bounds completely. So zero to zero for all these. That makes it completely invisible. Uh, I don't have a collision either. That doesn't really matter. But uh, this is the important part. So zero to zero, like so. And that's the thing. So we do that for the old va values, which is the full one. That's why we save them. Another thing worth mentioning here is if we actually was running already, then it's going to fall in here just to, so it clears the old one. So it clears the old ones so we can start with the new one without a problem. And then it just starts here like so. But here's the magic. Here's what's actually, this line here is the only thing that actually incre increased the whole lot uh, and uh, outputs the everything. So this part here loads the things. This starts it and this stops it. And here we have the other thing. So here we can see that uh, flippering thingy. So when it goes high or low on one of the sides, so the west side there, for, for that receiver, then we want to do things. And what we do first is just toggling uh, that output there, which causes everything to continue. So it's a very rapid uh, timer, uh, or a bit exploiting that, that that they can work together like that. But uh, and then we use three commands here to do the rest. What we do is we set the element variable I have it defined there to be the first one from the remaining one. So basically the next one of of the remaining ones, and then we take that element and remove it from the remaining one. So basically we take one element and say, all right, now we've used it, it's fine, you can go away. And here we just set it. So we grab the element. Um, that's not the important part. The important part is this thing. We update it, so we go from 8 to 24, which basically means we have a block which is half the full size, but in the middle, which makes these small dots rather than full blocks, which actually gives quite a powerful effect. Remember, no collision. And then I set it to emitter, a uh, redstone emitter head. That is not, of course, necessary. Uh, but I want that little red part in the middle, which looks quite cool. We could, of course, go with something else. Maybe some wool. Let's go with some lime wool. Like that. That's going to update it differently. One important thing is that this full one here is global, and the same thing goes with the remaining one. That has to be global, because otherwise they will re, uh, uh, be recreated each time the trigger triggers. So basically, here we load all the uh, different ones we want, and then when, when we've done that, we just take them one by one and make them visible like that. So now we will have lime wool instead symbolizing that. And yes, by a few modifications, you could actually make it update these differently depending on which one we select. So maybe we want green wool for one and, you know, uh, red wool for another and, and so on. Like that. And if you want to take a look on all of this, then we can of course do that. I'm just going to do this. Uh, we select all of them. Uh, let's make sure, yeah, no filter there. So that's all the ones I have. And let's uh, update its bounds to that, to the normal things. And then the count flush we do clear for both the inside and the outside and there we go and there we go that's how it looks like like so but we have removed their visual appearance and their collision and that's what uh, makes them well non collishable and well, no collidable and invisible but since these are advanced clusters we don't need any cables either which gives it a quite cool effect so there you go nothing too special now of course those will stay there until I actually refresh by it removing it like that. There we go. That's pretty much it. Good luck.